Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to the In the Bullseye podcast. My name is Paul Peck. We are coming to you from J.P. Fitzgerald's restaurant in Hamburg. Great spot for anybody that makes the trip out to the South Towns to come hang out. Food is great. The bar is great. Uh, plenty of TVs to watch all kinds of games, particularly football. We are in spring football season. It is just wrapping up for the Bulls, and we are joined on this edition of the In the Bullseye podcast by Bulls offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach Shane Montgomery. How many spring practices that just wrapped up for you in your uh, illustrious career it's uh season 31 or 32 it'll be 32nd season maybe a 31st spring that's pretty awesome right that's hey the fact that you have been doing it for that long and doing it well for that long is pretty cool uh any any theme that runs through what you look to accomplish in spring practice and spring games and have that team sort of ready before you let them go for the summer yeah i think the difference now when i between when i was playing and when I first started out, uh, you had a lot more practices. There used to be 20. There was no limitations on time. There was no limitations on full pads. I mean, you went after it for a while. I think the difference nowadays is you want to try to get in as much as possible to see what the kids can pick up. Uh, you try to keep them healthy. And then when you get towards the end here now, I think you just try and look for consistency throughout and really see who's the guys that, that are stepping up for you guys you think you're going to count on next fall. Because of the late start to the staff last year. This is the first spring practice that you have taken your team through. Did you structure it differently? Did you teach it at all differently? Because even though you've had a season under your belt, you haven't had a spring under your belt. Yeah, we, i tell you what we did. We got in a little bit more. You know, when we got here in the in the last late spring, May, um, you know, we tried to implement some things in the summer and we didn't get everything installed that we wanted to uh, because of the late start. And I think we, you know, it tricked in, we were still getting some things in throughout the season that we would have put in during fall camp. Uh, we've been able to uh, speed that process up a little bit. We've been able to throw more at them. And I think that so we've been able to see some things that and run some things that we really didn't get to during the season. But we want to get them in to see how it looks and at least they have an idea of what it is. So if we want to use it during the season, you know, they're used to it. So the, the overall goal is you get a, you throw a lot of plays in and then you decide what you want to bring back. And, and I guess like you said if you bring it back in week five they'll at least be familiar with what it is yeah they have it because the one thing you don't want to do you always have your base offense and defense throughout the season and you're going to run the same plays you know week after week but you are going to install some things the things you don't want to do i think the successful teams you don't want to have a complete different game plan every week. So as much of, of the schemes that we can get in now, at least our guys have an understanding. And if, if we don't use them for week four and five, at least they've run it before, so they have a little bit of knowledge of it. All right, well, let's dive in a little bit to some of the key players that are going to be a part of your offense. And there are a lot of new names and some players in different roles. And I guess we should start where we always start, which is the quarterback position. You are looking for a new quarterback this year. Run us through the guys how they performed in the spring, what each of them bring to the table, and where you are and where you're going with the decision process. Yeah, well, we've had – it's been open competition, which it was last year. You know, we've got four guys right now that are taking all the reps. You know, obviously, talked about new guys. Cole Schneider has come in, a local product from Rutgers. Uh, he's got three years under his belt. He does have a little bit of experience. And then we've got – uh, two returning guys, one in Matt Myers, another local product that uh, has played a lot in the past, and Casey Case, who's been in the system uh, for a year and has, has been in the program for two years. So those guys are getting the majority of the reps. Brian Plummer, a freshman uh, from Maryland, is getting some reps also. So what I've tried to do really is just try to get those guys as many reps as possible. We've kind of alternated them uh, with the ones, twos, and threes throughout camp, really just to get them with different people see how they fit and mesh with different people whether it's receivers whether it's your line and and it's really you know just trying to get them as many reps as possible in certain situations and then we'll grade them and then I'm sure that you know we'll have the process that will continue throughout the fall before we're ready to name a starter right so that won't happen until you get a little bit into fall yeah I don't camp. think so I think we'll keep it uh, we'll keep grading them we'll keep seeing how they perform and and then we're gonna you know after the season we'll, we'll probably add some more faces through the summer 
summer. So I think once we get everybody here and see how that how they gel with everybody, we probably won't be able to name a starter, be ready to name a starter yet. Right. The guys they are going to be throwing to, speaking of adding new faces, there obviously was a very concerted effort to up the speed and athleticism at the wide receiver position, and it looks like you have done that. Um, run me through a little bit of how you've been impressed with some of the new guys you brought in, like a Justin Marshall, transfer from Louisville, Booby Curry, the transfer from Arizona, and amongst some of the other guys and the ones that you're bringing back. Yeah, I thought, you know, last year I've been coaching a long time. I thought that was probably one of the thinnest receiver groups we had had, more just based on numbers. You know, we didn't have a lot of numbers there, so we tried to address it. You know, we brought in, we did bring in the three transfers, uh, Justin Marshall from Louisville, Booby Carey from Arizona, Trey Hines from uh, San Mateo Junior College, uh, along with, you know, bringing back Q Williams and Jamari Gassett and Javion Cuff and Marlon Johnson. Uh, and we talked a little bit about this before, but uh, the, the guys that came in new are, are picking things up. They're doing some good things. They're going to bring a lot more uh, big play capability to our offense. But I've been impressed also with the guys that return. They've done a really good job in retention of uh, improving their play. Uh, they've all gotten bigger and stronger, and they're, gonna, they're contributing more. You got a guy like you know Giovanni Ruiz who's coming back from an injury who's almost, you know, when he gets there, he'll almost be like adding another transfer. So it's a much more athletic group much more explosive group than we had last year and I look forward to watching him in the fall. You're listening to the In the Bullseye podcast with Bulls offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach Shane Montgomery. My name is Paul Peck. We're coming to you from J.P. Fitzgerald's restaurant in Hamburg in the South Town. So uh, the guys up front will obviously have to play a big role in getting those quarterbacks and those receivers yeah. time to do what they want to do. Uh, there's some changes there as well too. run me through the offensive line. Well, those guys, you know, we do have a number of guys coming back. We added a couple mid-year transfers, Des Besant from San Diego State and uh, Sidney Walker from UConn. And so, you know, that's a, that's a group that, you know, when you put those guys together, and we've had some guys dinged up that have missed some practice, what we're trying to find is our five best guys. And to get to your five best guys out there, you might have to move some people positionally. I think any time you go out of spring, and whether it's coming out of spring practice or coming out of fall camp next year, who are your top eight or nine guys? And when you get to that position, it might not be the, the, the sixth guy in might not be just the backup for that position. And it's really important nowadays that that the guys up front can play multiple positions. You know, who's our second and third center? Who's our third and fourth tackle? Who's our third and fourth guard? And to get there, you might have to move some people around. But they've responded well. You know, Jack Haas has gotten a lot better. You know, uh, uh, Gabe Wallace coming back. You know, he played he played tackle and guard for us last year. He's played both. So we're trying to get those guys as much experience as possible at different positions so that we can put our five best out there. And, and that will be a continuous process throughout the summer. Uh, extension of the offensive line and sometimes can be the tight ends helping out with the blocking. I know in Robbie Mangus, the transfer from Dartmouth, you got a guy that has done it at a pretty high level in the Ivy League. Where do you see Robbie fitting in at, with the rest of that position? Yeah, Robbie's been a, a very important piece that we add in this offseason. You know, we've got Trevor Borland coming back. We had a couple guys that left the program. Um, but he's he's been good. You know, he's like, we feel like with Trevor Borland and him, it's like, you know, 1A and 1B out there. And we're going to use 12 personnel with two tight ends a lot. So those those guys you're going to see a lot. But Robbie's played a lot of ball. Uh, he's an Ivy League graduate, so he's a smart guy. He was an all-league guy, too, so he's got talent. But, you know, those guys are not only just on-the-line blockers, but those guys are guys you can you can split out and do some things with. So we've been really pleased with that. That's a position that I always felt like you can't have enough depth there because those guys are not only important on offense, but they're important on special teams. And those guys have done well, and I think both those guys Guys will have really solid years for us. There'll be new names at running back this year, some younger guys. And, you know, I know in a guy like Mike Washington, that's a guy that there was some buzz around when he got into the program. He played a little bit last year. And then there's some younger guys that maybe we don't know a ton about. Um, but obviously there's a tradition of being a great running back program. Do you feel like that's going to continue? I do. I think, uh, you know, the thing Ron Cook got hurt really early in camp, and he's been out, I think, since practice, too. He'll be back. Uh, it was tough losing losing him because he was the one that had the most experience, but he's been really helping the younger guys. You've got Mike Washington, you've got LJ Henderson, you've got Karan Robinson, you've got some young guys that, you know, have 
have played some before. You know, Mike got a taste of what, you know, you saw a taste of what he could do last year. Uh, he brings that bigger back mentality. So I think we've got a good core there. They all uh, they all run the ball well. They all catch the ball well the backfield. I think, you know, the, the thing for them will be how quick can those guys get picking up pass protection because that's an important part of today's game. But People don't always think of that. About yeah, they don't. Today. And I think that's the biggest, the biggest uh, transformation from high school to college is because I don't know how many guys picked up blitz and things in college. So the younger guys, they have a chance to play more early when they can do those type of things that, that people don't see all the time. But I, I think we feel really good about that group. Coach Knox, our new running backs coach, doing a great job with them, and they'll be ready to play. So as we head you know, into the summer and we get into the fall and we get into the season, give me an idea as we wrap things up with you, Shane, of what might this offense look like differently than it has in the past, or what do you really want it to look like when you start to get into those games in September and start to get things happening the way you want them to. Yeah, well, we build offensively. We want to be a fast, physical team. You know, we'll we'll mix tempos in. Uh, you see a lot of guys that are just straight up tempo, and some guys that huddle. You know, we're we're a no huddle offense that'll mix tempos. Uh, we like to control the ball a little bit. Uh, the running game is going to be key for us. You know, I thought we ran the ball pretty well at times last year. We've got to up that a little bit. I think our offensive line will be a little bit more. Uh, will be bigger this year up front, so I think it'll help in the running game. And then you know. You throw in the RPOs and the play action passes. I think the thing that I like right now is, like I said before, I think we have big, more big play capability in this offense. Uh, it's hard anymore to just drive the ball for 10 or 12 plays every series without making a mistake sure. at some point. So I think the, the big play capability has got to be there. But really looking for uh, the, what the kids got to do in the summer is just they've got to retain, they've got to go out and work on the craft on their own so that when we come back in fall, uh, we can just pick up where we left off uh, at the end of spring and, and hopefully carry that to another level. All right, looking forward to it all getting started at Maryland in early September. Shane, appreciate the time as always. Looking forward to seeing what this offense is going to do. He is Shane Montgomery. He is the Bulls offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach, and we thank him for joining us on this edition of the In the Bullseye podcast.